Hey, it's Karen from Liongate Farm, and today I'm going to take you on a spring bunny journey. We're going to make it on a little different stand. This is just an option. This is a little harder project, so let's get started. So today we are going to make a spring bunny. This is a little bit harder project. You know, I keep challenging you guys. Um, today, though, I am going to build it on a wooden base because you probably have more access to a wooden base than you would have the bed springs. You can get these old antique bed springs like on Etsy or your antique shops around. You just got to look for them. Um, I'm lucky I have kind of a stash of them. But since this is probably not readily available for you, I'm going to show you how to do it on this base. Um, there is a, it's a dowel. John makes these for me. He drills a hole, he, well, he cuts the wood, drills a hole and pounds in the dowel. So this is my base for today. It'll be a little bit taller, which I like better um, than the spring, but I do like the way the spring looks, hence the spring bunny. And we're gonna use rabbit color instead of this jackrabbit color. So I'll show that to you. It's pretty fun. So let's get started. And let me go through the materials that you're going to need one by one. So let's go through the materials you need. You need your needles. I use a pin tool, mostly with two needles. 38 star spiral. I just happen to have a 38 star handy here. That's your needles you need. You need your felting surface. Wire. Okay. For the body, you need a 15 inch piece of 16 gauge wire. For the front legs, I did that wrong. For the body, you need a 15 inch piece. So the shorter one. For the front legs, you need a 16 inch. For the back legs, you need a 21 inch piece. And then for the ears, you're gonna need an 11 inch piece of 18 gauge wire. So that's just the wire that you need. He's got pretty, it's pretty simple. He does take three ounces of core wool. He's a big bunny. And then your choice of like white wool for his chest and his tail and his ears. A little bit of pink um, for inside the ears. Your body color, probably three quarters of an ounce. We're gonna actually use rabbit today, which is different than the jackrabbit I have on the original bunny that I showed you. And then a little bit of black. For his details. Ruler's always good. Skewer's always good for punching your holes to put your put your wire through. And then a base of some kind. This project will not stand without a base. Canon asked me that question. And so a bed spring, a dowel with a wood base, which is what I'm going to show you today, probably most readily for you to, to obtain. Hobby stores often have these pre-made, so you could check there. All right, first thing we're going to do is we're going to make the body wire and dress it. This looks like a dinosaur. I know it. That is your body wire. And again, we're going to take the 15-inch wire. Let me make sure my measurements are correct. Probably going to need wire cutters to cut the wire. This is my 15 inch wire. So you are going to bend. This isn't super scientific, this one, because we're just trying to get a shape on the wire to wrap. So I am going to follow my existing wire that I have here, since I know that I followed it on the paper. Get your basic head shape and then you're going to come to the end of the tail. So this guy is totally wired, which means he's totally poseable. And then, so the tail, you want the tail to be like an inch or so big and just twist that extra back into the body. So there's your little tail. And you want the tail to, to go this way. So not this way, not flat. You're going to have it this way because that'll build up the bulk of the tail. And then I just want to make sure that I'm right. 
So the first thing we're going to do is wrap the head. You are going to use all three ounces of the core wool if you make this bunny the same size that I have them. So I'm going to take a length of core wool. I'm going to tuck it in. I'm going to hold it with my finger and I'm just going to wrap its head. Again, like I said, this is a little bit more advanced project. I'm going to start stretching, stretching you guys into the more advanced stuff. Besides, and it was so cute, I had to figure out how to show it. And then we're going to poke this. Remember, there's wire in there. So the, the bunny's head is con is like a cone. And remember, this is all about shapes. And shapes are often the same for any animal. I was making a sheep earlier. And I was like, man, this shape is the same dang shape of the head of the rabbit. It's just a little bit smaller. I didn't have wire in it, but they're almost always triangular. For animals or some form of triangle unless you're doing a cow a cow has like many planes of angulation cows are very hard I think cows are up there with cats as level of difficulty for felting so you don't want that wire right in the end see how I have mine in the end here I'm gonna add a little to that but first I want to get this nice and felted Because, and I'm going to use my pen tool now. Because we are going to put details in the face, we're going to want this to be pretty solid. I mean, not rock hard, but solid enough to sculpt. I don't like my projects super soft, but I also don't like them super hard. I like them right in the middle. I'm like the middle bear and gold the middle bear and goldilocks. I don't like my porridge too hot or too cold. I like it just right. You can hear that it's starting to get firmer. Sun is out today. I'm itching to get outside and work in the gardens. Not that I can do a lot at one time, but I can do I can do chip away at it a little bit at a time. Tiny bit at a time. Or I can convince my husband to help me. <laughs> Which is my plan for the afternoon. And I'm sure he'll be thrilled, and I'm being sarcastic. He will not be thrilled. John does not like to garden at all. Mostly because, even though we're farmers, he just does not like to get dirty, which I think is hilarious. So because this isn't getting smooth right here and I need a little bit more in the end, I'm going to add just a, a little bit. But we want to maintain this, this triangle shape all the way around. I just needed a little bit more down here. So that when I sculpt in his nose and his mouth, that we will be able to have some fiber to grab onto and no wire. Okay, so we're starting to make some headway. So now we know 
hold that. We gotta go here. And I'm gonna compare him to my diagram. Make sure I have the curve right. I'm gonna attach a little piece of core wool to his head. And I'm just gonna wrap down this wire. So this is a little bit tricky um, to get this body built on this single wire because you know I don't like complicated armatures. I hate how they get in the way while you're working on them. So I tend to build them a little bit more simple. Oh, there's a piece of Stellina, sparkly Stellina in here. It was probably on the table. All right, so now I'm gonna have you make a little roll. Roll this kind of tight. Piece of somebody's farm. And then pull, stretch it out. You know how I like to do this. And this is going to be right there. And then we're gonna take a little piece Try and maintain it at the bottom of the arch. We're just starting to build it up. And you know, we can always add, give it some stabs. The only other thing I didn't mention that you need to attach this bunny to its base is a glue gun. So I end up cutting a slit in its belly and then I, I, I try the bunny on for size on the dowel and then I shoot a whole bunch of glue up in there. We're probably going to repeat the step that we just did one more time. I'm going to show you where we're at so you understand where we're going. Here's where we're at. We have a little bit more to, this is hard to show you, a little bit, we have a lot to build up here. So this is where we're at, this is where we're going. Now, there's a couple ways you can do this. You can sit and add little pieces, add little pieces. I still like this method the best. I'm making a little roll again, and I'm rolling it pretty tight. And I'm just gonna add it onto the bottom here. Rip is chewing on something under the table. I have no idea what he's got. Can you see what he has, Cannon? Is it just his his, toy. his sheep? Yeah, Rip has a sheep toy he likes to chew on. And then I'm again I'm gonna wrap. Wrap this around. Looking like a salamander right about now. This guy takes a while, just so you know. He takes a while to get firm. I've got a piece in here, I'm gonna wrap it. And I'm wrapping kind of tight because we want it kind of firm. Again, medium firm, not super hard. And see, some of my, some of my, Fiber has slipped off the end of my tail wire. I'm gonna poke it back down. So let's work on this for a minute. I wanna connect the head.
again. I'm going to compare it to the picture, see where I'm at. All right, we're getting there. These are really cute like in a centerpiece on your table for Easter or for spring or on your tiered tray. I'm using um, some deep poking right here. So normally I say let the needle do the work. I'm just compacting the body from all sides. Get it all hooked together. Work for both sides so you're even. You're gonna to wanna to work around. Because remember their belly is round. Looks like some kind of fish right now. So at this point, we are going to add one. I'm going to add it in smaller increments now. All right. Again, I'm going to show you where we're at, where we're going. Our back is built up. We need to build this part. So we're going to add like that. We are going to add strips now this way and then I had another one this way remember this isn't a race this is a harder project. It does take time. I've made a couple of them already, so I kind of know what I'm doing. I can tell you the first one I made, it took me a, a longer time. So just take your time. I know I make it look easy sometimes because I've already done it. So it's kind of memory. Usually I have to make about five of these to get it right so that I can show you how to make one. All right, so we're getting firm and we're getting to the point where we're gonna need to add the leg wires. Still don't like the way this is not totally attached. So I'm going to work on this for a minute. Kind of looks like a bird right now. When it comes to this portion of his neck, his head isn't going to stick out too much back here. It's going to be kind of flat.
So this end will become as wide as this. In fact, we're going to add some wires right now. <coughs> All right, so where we have right now, this is still pretty soft, but that's okay. You can compare it to our picture. We're getting close. So see, I only have a little bit more to do there, but see, this has got to be built out, but I want to add the leg wires first. So this is where your skewer comes in. And the front legs, you're going to look at the head and they're going to end up like right here. So I'm going to give you a measurement that I don't have written on my sheet. So about three inches down from the top of the head. Okay, you're gonna put your skewer through and this is the shorter wire. So this is the 16 inch wire. Just follow that skewer through and then find the center. I know it looks really long, doesn't it? It looks really, I should probably give you this I just do this by feel, <laughs> but I'll give you measurements. So at about two inches, two inches from the body, you're going to make a little bend. And then we're going to bend it this way, come back. And I just let it sit there. Same on the other side. So we've got another one. And you can give it a little twist if you want, but you want to leave this, this part, this is your little paw that we're going to build. So then we have our, our two little front legs. Remember at about two inches, there's going to be a little bend. And you can always adjust that later. So then we're going to add our back legs and take your ruler and it's probably four inches according to my picture and it's pretty close. About an inch, inch and a half down. You kind of got to eyeball this. Um, so I am inch and a half from the back. I'm an inch from the top of his body. We're going to follow this wire through. I'm working the wire through because I missed. It'll come through though. Okay. Same thing we did in the front, kind of. All right, this one, you're going to have, I want you to kind of follow your picture. I guess my pictures are going to be pretty important for them to follow, Gannon. <laughs> and then we're going to bend back the feet, just like we did in the front. Now, eyeball it eyeball it make sure that looks like it's gonna be correct it does look like it's gonna be correct and then again I'm gonna twist just a little bit don't worry if your bends aren't in there yet I'm just getting that wire out of the way and then we're gonna start building up the legs and things So for the front legs, and the body is not completely built up yet because we're going to do it with the legs all together. So you kind of do this by, by feel. So I'm stabbing my corbel in right here where his shoulder would kind of be. And I'm going to wrap. And you're going to go a little bit past the end a little bit be careful it doesn't slip off you can see that's going to give you a paw right away 
but we will have to build that up some more. Let's poke the end in so it doesn't slip off. And that's not quite big enough, so let's make it a little bit bigger. You can see we have one leg. And then let's go to the back leg. Same process. But I want to I want to kind of put my bends in for my feet. So that I know where my big old paws are gonna be. This is probably gonna take more than one piece of core wool to wrap down. Remember to wrap nice and flat. Keep your wool nice and flat. Come around, let go of it if you need to. Let's stab it in here again. It's just like the front leg. I didn't go far enough past the foot. I'm gonna start another piece here. So when you come around this, so there's this foot corner. When you come around this corner, don't go on the corner, then just go to the foot. And that will leave this little joint exposed. Get a nice sharp corner there for where his foot sticks out. Tack that in. Remember when you're working with this, there's wire in there. They break needles. We'll build that up some more. So now on this side, we need to build up his haunch. So we know he needs a, a butt back here. Remember I told you this wasn't built up all the way. So kind of eyeball it. You know that it's going to be like this shape. We want to come up, whoops, between. We want to come up behind. So let me show you that again. You're coming around and up. And that's going to build that up for you. And you know, you can go on to the other side if you've already wrapped this leg and do the same thing, or you can just bring this back if you haven't stabbed it enough, which I didn't. If you have this poked in enough right here. You can see he's getting a, a little hind end there and you can come around again, or you can actually come back this way and up. However you need and what you need to build it up. Just get that bulk. So what's happening here is this needs to be built up right here. Get this all poked in. Something tells me you guys might like to see me do that again on this side. You can see that gives him a little haunch for his leg. And then this, I would take a little piece here, a little glue, a little wool glue. And let's smooth this out. Hi, Stewie the cat. No rabbit hunting today. 
And as you can see, he's starting to look like he has a back leg there. Okay, so up in the shoulder area, you can do the same thing. Let's build this up a little bit. I'm gonna build that shoulder up just by wrapping a piece around. I don't like how this is not helping. I'm just gonna keep working this over so it all becomes one. So I know you wanna see that back leg again. I know that if it was me watching a video, I would want to see it again. So I'm going to show you again. But your bunny should be starting to take shape. So again, I got, I'm taking a nice big piece here. I divided it in half. I'm using a, a it's a sliver, core wool, roving. Which makes it felt really fast, which is fantastic. I'm wrapping down the leg. I don't like that this piece is not twisted. There, now it is. I mean, it's gonna disappear, but I'm just being picky. So again, go around and then come around the foot to maintain this little corner. It will naturally cover it. Let's go to past the end, because you wanna have enough room away from that wire to stab it in, and then I'm gonna Secure this. Pull the end in. I'm going to do it again. make this foot fat again. Okay, we got that guy. Now, here we go again. Remember, I'm going to secure it up here. I'm going to come down and around and back up. <laughs> Ken and Stewie is talking to you. You can see this naturally is making The belly area and the leg area. You're going to have to get in here and work this a lot. And we still need one more piece. Now that one I might have done a little bit different than the first way, but it's still all the same. It's all the same, but it still needs another little piece here. I can see it to smooth this out. You know, I know some of you are probably going to say, hey, Kieran, is this going to be a kit? Possibly. It depends on if my husband has enough time to make me some bases. 
kind of busy because of course I'm going to want him to garden, but we'll see if he can make me some bases. And if he can, then I might be able to make this into a kit. So there you can see we have a hind end of a rabbit here. And then we're going to go back and make the other front paw. Hmm. I tore off a small piece. So let's see what I can do with this small piece. I'm going to add it around. I'm going to draft it out a little bit because I'm not going to be able to make it all the way to the end. Oh, maybe, maybe. I like doing this in real time for you and having real time problems because then you can see how to solve them. So I'm starting right there. I'm going past the foot, the end of the foot, and I'm coming back up and I'm going to secure it together. This paw over here is really furry and it's not supposed to be. Okay, one more piece. I'm getting the longer piece this time. All right, long piece. Let's come around. Don't want to make it too thick all at once because we are going to add top coat to this and you don't want them to have giant paws. I just poked my finger. Remember, do as I say, not as I do. <laughs> I'm not bleeding. <laughs> We're gonna come around and make the shoulder. You can see he's still looking pretty messy because I'm gonna have to come back in here in a minute. And I'm just going to wrap that piece around into this shoulder. So like I told you before, I'm going to compare them to the picture. We are super, super close now. But you can see I still need a little bit more belly. Feet are good. I'm not going to worry about that belly yet until I get this all solidified. And the reason we want this solidified and nice and firm is because what we're going to do next is put him on a stick. So um, you have to decide where you want your bunny to be on your stick. And then you're going to take scissors and cut a little slit. Could you hand me a pair of scissors? White ones. Thank you. I forgot scissors. You need scissors. So you'll cut a slit. Am I out of the frame? I hope not. You probably want sharper scissors than I have, or you can just like make a hole and then decide if your bunny is going to balance on your base. Okay, and then once you're convinced that's where you want him, you're going to glue him in. Um, and then you're going to continue to build up the belly around that base stick that you put in there. Something very important, do not poke until you are sure the glue is dry up in there. <laughs> because it will, if it's still tacky, and wet, that hot glue will get into the barbs of your needle and render your needle useless, 100%. So let me poke on this a little bit more. I'm, I hope I'm still in the frame here. I was cutting a better hole. I'm testing. So I know that that it's going to end up just like this. Okay, so I'm going to 
first I'm going to run his ear wire. I'm going to show you how to do that. And then I am going to um, I lost my train of thought. I'm going to run his ear wire and then I'm going to glue him in. And then I'm going to work on him. So the ear wire it's almost even with the arm wire. You're going to take your little 18 gauge looking for my 18 gauge wire, which seems really long, but it is not. So it's 11 inches and you're going to send it through to get your wire in. Find center. And then basically find center again. And I like them to be a little bit pointy, but a little bit round. Did that make sense at all? Probably not. And then just bring your wire back down. You can actually stick it back in the same hole. That's what I found. Stick it back down in the same hole. And then our wire is going to be in. So then once he's glued on, we're going to continue building him up. And that takes a while. And I will come back and show you what he looks like with all of his fiber built up on him. And I hope I'm not jumping the gun on you or missing a step, which I don't think I am. So you have a nice round there. You're going to build up this belly around that stick. And you are going to firm up his legs and then work his head just a little bit. And I'll show you that. All right. So I'll be back in just a minute. Okay. So I have been working on this for a while. And I just want to show you where I'm at. I have my ear wires in. I have my base glued in. And I built up all around until he was nice and fat. Nice and fat here. And then I worked on his legs and got them pretty solid. I mean, I'm still a little bit hairy here and there. But this is how firm he is. Okay, paws are still kind of soft. The head is still triangular. I did firm up his neck right in here. And I will make... I will make this look more like a rabbit with the with the core color so we have these ears and the reason they're not covered with core wool is because they're thin they're thin so I'm going to start with my ears I'm going to start with my ears I am using rabbit color on this guy like I said the other guy I showed you at first was done in jackrabbit this one's actually called a rabbit and it's Corydale Sliver which means you know, the fibers are not all in the line. So I tore off a little piece and I'm gonna start by stabbing it in his head. And then I'm going to wrap. Don't pull too tight on this. You know, it will collapse your wire. Go a little bit past, you know how I am about going past the end of that wire. Come back. I'm not too worried about making these super, super thin. And then I'm going to stab this back in. If you wrap it nice and smooth, all in one fell swoop here, you should just be able to stab this in. Let's round out his ear. Poke it down. can bend his ear. You can, that's the cool thing about having wire armatures is you can bend them and put them back. Work your extra down into the face, into the head. I'm not going to add the white detailing yet. I'm going to flip it. Let's wrap the other ear. Make sure you got the shape you want. Again, attach it to the head. Let 
See, I squeezed that with my fingers and I lost my shape. So pull it back out, pass the end, come back. Now I didn't quite have enough, so let's see if I can make this work. Take your time on this. You want these to be pretty clean. Let's poke that in down in. Let's see, I have a little bit of wire showing. I do not want wire. Just be gentle on this. And now we're going to wrap the head. You're just going to continue to use small amounts. Start at the nose, come back up. It's going to take away more than one piece. It's a little awkward now with the base attached, but at least you know you have the right shaped bunny. <laughs> on the base. A lot of times I will work on this with the base standing up, but since I am doing the video, <laughs> I need to have it laying down. Let's put a little piece between his ears. So again, this is building up parts of the head as adding that little piece to the, between his ears, built his nose up a little bit more. And you can kind of get an idea where the eye is gonna go. I'll switch to the pen tool to get this all smoothed out. Okay, this is the fun part where we get to make them colors. If you've got them all nice and smoothed out, your core wool's pretty firm, this should, this step where we add the color should be pretty quick. See, I went a little bit past his nose there so that I have a little extra. As you're poking, you can kind of see the eye is naturally going to fall right there in a line with the end of his nose. I am just going to add body color. This is like a chocolate Easter bunny. So now remember, they have this little jaw area right here. And this is where you want to start to sculpt things in. So we have his neck. And we know that there's a little bit of... We need a little line right there. And you can actually build, stack, make a little stack and build this little jaw area up. You could probably do it with core wool, but I just tend to do it with the color so that I can see where things are going to be. So we know his eyes right there.
I'm already planning where his mouth is going to end up. I like my rabbit smiling. But first I need to come in here and poke a lot to get this all finished. Get this all nice and flat. Maybe that isn't where my mouth is going to be. You can see I still have the triangle there and I still have a triangle here. So what I'm going to do is take like a bit and I'm going to cover him in his body color. And it's very similar to when you built him with core, him or her, I don't know, um, it. Just wrap those paws. Go out a bit and poke them in. And so it's going to take you a while to get this all covered in the body color. Just work slow and steady and make it nice and smooth. That's the key to making this rabbit look good. It's a nice, smooth body color. It's gonna, we're gonna cover the whole thing in this rabbit color. Probably take a while. All right, I've been working on this bunny top coat for about 45 minutes to get it nice and smooth. Um, if you want, you can add toes into your rabbit just by poking in a few details here. If you want him to have toes, you can do that. Um, let's put on his face. You are going to, remember I said we were looking at eyeballs. The eyeballs are in line with the ear and where the nose is gonna be. You got a direct line. So I am gonna take a little teeny piece of black and roll it up and poke it in here. I'll just make a little round eye. And then I'm gonna flip him over and give him another one. Um, make sure that they're in the same, if they're at the same height. You want them the same size, always. So I'm going to crank his head over so you can see what I'm going to do for his nose. So we know that the corner of the nose is there. The corner of this is here. And I'm just going to stab where my fiber is going to go. I always draw what I'm going to do first. You can see I'm missing a little bit of top coat here on his nose, which did not become apparent until I started doing what I was doing just now. You can tell by the sound how firm I have this end felted in order for these details to go in. So let's just take a few fibers and we'll start in the mouth area and just fill in part of the smile. Just 
just a few. You don't want too many. You don't want it to get too thick. Notice it's a little V. Now, once you get all these little black fibers taken care of, you can take a tiny bit of pink, just a tiny bit, and I'm just going to fill in this little spot right here. I like a heart. You don't have to add this. It's just kind of fun. And if you want, you can put a little white dot in the eyeball. Now, let's just take, I'm using some white, pole, um, this is Polworth, and I just took off a piece and I'm gonna stab it down here at the base. I like this kind of floofy in his ears. I don't like it all the way. Felt it in, except for right here at the base. And then just leave it kind of fluffy. We'll do the other ear. So you need very little white for the ears. Let's just move this one over. Normally I would work on this standing up. But since I have the camera here, I can make sure that you can see what I'm doing. So we have some white in his ears. And then let's put some white on his chest. Just take a little stack. And what I like to do is poke it right here, right at his neck. And then just bring it down. Again, let this be fluffy. Just barely attach it so that it's nice and fluffy up in there. That's why I like using the pole work because it's fluffy. Fluffy white. And then the last space, we need white. We're almost done with this guy. Oops, that's way too much. Another white little piece right at the base of his tail, so it can be Peter Cottontail. Poke it on in the middle and let's let it fluff up. I hope you enjoy this project. Again, if you need supplies, look at how cute he is. It's just so cute. Um, I used Rabbit. Color, Corydale Sliver for the body and it took almost this is what's left it took almost three quarters of an ounce and then I used white Polworth for his white I used um, Hollyhock for his pink which is just a smidge and then you know Raven Raven Corydale black Let's put a little a white in his eyes so you can see what I'm talking about. Very small amount of fiber. I licked my finger just so I could get a, a little ball. Now that looks big, but it's going to disappear. At about the 2 o'clock spot, just put a little white. Tiny, you want this dot to be super tiny. And then on this side, always look at your rabbit from like, or whatever you're making from the all the different sides. So you can make sure that everything is symmetrical or close. All right. And there you have it. One spring bunny. I can't show him to you very well on this angle. You can put a little white on the back of his feet if you want. Just, you know, customize them the way you like them. And then post pictures on the Facebook page, the Lion Gate Farm Southern Oregon Fiber Art page. Join that group, post some pictures. We want to see. Thanks for joining me today while we made our spring bunnies. 
I can't wait to see yours. So make sure you post them and make sure you click like, and then follow us on YouTube because that really helps us out. And if you need supplies, head over to the farm store at liongate.org. See you next time.